Hello, welcome to week seven. So second virtual class, I think we're doing all right. Um, this week we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, chapter six, which was about schools. And we're also going to talk about uh, the midterm that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So let's jump in. All right, so this week is all about schools and there's a lot of material that the book covers, which I'm hoping that you will make sure you read the chapter. Um, but one of the areas that I think is important to really begin to explore is, you know, this idea that schools are beginning to look at, which is what really should schools teach? Um, during the industrialization era and during urbanization and immigration, there was some like clear ideas about what should be taught. But today that clarity is not um, as strong. And so in the 21st century, a lot of schools are reimagining what um, what they should be focusing on. So I'd like you to really dive into that a little deeper um, by kind of looking through that section in your book, as well as um, just posting um, some thoughts about um, what you've learned so far about the best optimal environment for um, learning for adolescents. And if you go to this Padlet, you will see um, that on this Padlet, there is uh, uh, an opportunity for you to post your ideas. I give you some pages to look at. Um, please make sure that you put your name on your post because that's how I'm gonna give you credit for participating in this um, and ensuring that you've been able to uh, dive into the, the lesson for the day. Um, you can post other ideas other than your textbook. So f feel free to do that as well. Um, so going back to some of the ideas that we've been um, also exploring, um, we're going to look at, um, along with uh, looking at the learning environment and the climate of the school, I also want you to look at what does the book talk about when it says uh, school reform, in particular with urban schools, uh, because this is an area that has really been a struggle. Um, I want you to remember that we've talked a lot about um, historically why our um, inner city schools are the way they are, right? Uh, remember redlining that we talked about. Um, remember also we talked about um, the boarding schools that a lot of indigenous children were forced to go to, um, kind of the splitting up of tribes. Um, all of these things impact inner city um, schools um, because that's, a lot of them are with from children of color. So, and thinking about that, um, I also want you to explore how education in the inner cities is impacted by suburban violence, which is not something that you often see or often probably explore. Um, and a really great video to do this is this video um, that talks about the history of the zero tolerance policy. This is really important. Uh, we're gonna dive into this a little bit um, next week when we meet again face to face. So please make sure that you take some time to watch this video. It gives the history of zero tolerance policy and where it came from. And then I'd like you again to jump over to this Padlet. Um, so this is a second Padlet. And I want you to think about how do perceptions drive zero tolerance more in communities of color? Um, so how does perception play a role? And so in this one, um, same thing, please put your name so that I know that you um, participated in this Padlet. Uh, and then finally, um, really thinking about what matters for students and remembering um, that it really is the intimate relationships that they develop with the um, healthy adults in their lives, um, valuing the assets that they bring, um, acknowledging their history, um, and also giving them a curriculum that really um, is connected to them and to their culture, right? Um, and, 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 and helping them participate in the school culture without asking them to assimilate, which is really important. Um, that's a difficult one, but it's one that if we fail to do, then we, we fail all of our students. Um, so really think about what matters. Uh, you can include this in your uh, midterm. 
you can also um, think about this for um, maybe some of the your final project that you're going to work on. After class, um, continue to work on your webliography. Um, there is a sample for you um, as well. So um, you can look at that sample. So this sample is a live link. I've shared this with you before. Um, it just gives you the format in which you're going to do the webliography. Uh, remember, more information is on the syllabus. And then finally, you're going to do a discussion forum on peer groups and school climate. Um, so in Titanium, uh, for week seven, um, that will be your discussion uh, here, identifying the best learning environment for adolescents. Um, and so you're going to jump in here and um, really look at what is the best learning environment for adolescents. Uh, it's a discussion. What I've been noticing with our discussions is that you have posted um, a response, but some of you are not replying to two other people. Please make sure you reply to two other people to get full credit. Otherwise, you're only going to get two points and not four points. Also, I want you to note that the rubric for the midterm is here. Um, so this is the rubric. Um, this is the uh, how I'm going to uh, grade your midterm. Um, I'm looking at content, preparedness, that you stay on topic, and comprehension. I will tell you that um, I don't grade them equally. So I will weigh more heavily content and comprehension. Um, because this, remember, content tells me that you um, understand the material that you're going to present on. And comprehension tells me that you have been able to synthesize the information. Uh, remember, with synthesis, it's really about um, applying what you've learned here in content to a given situation. So you can apply it to um, teaching strategies in the classroom. You can apply it to um, helping parents with communication with adolescents. Um, remember that um, there's a lot of areas that you can go and think about who your target audience is and how would you apply it for that target audience. Uh, so really um, start beginning to focus on, on your midterm and next week um, I'll create some classroom time so we can discuss a little bit about the midterm and make sure that everyone feels comfortable. All right, with that, I hope you have a great week. Um, any questions, please send me an email, a message. You can text me and I will see you online until I see you next week. All right, talk soon.